In this video, we're going to show you how to install the AC condenser and receiver dryer on your Ford Explorer located behind the front grille. Before beginning this job, go ahead and bring the vehicle down to your local repair shop and have the AC system professionally evacuated. With the hood open, go ahead and open up the cap for the expansion tank. Set that aside. With the vehicle raised, we're going to use our 19mm wrench and come up underneath the driver's side of that radiator. You're going to locate this white plug or drain plug. We're going to go ahead and turn that counterclockwise. You want to have a catch can or a bucket underneath to go ahead and catch this coolant. At this point here, we have just a small dribble of coolant coming out. It's pretty much safe to go ahead and close this. Now we can close it by hand. We don't need a wrench. Just tighten that down. Just snug it up by hand. Install the expansion tank cap. Secure that. We want to go ahead and remove our mass airflow sensor here. Now I'm using a mirror here to show you. There's a red lock clip on this here. I'm going to use a pick. You can use your finger if you want. But you want to go ahead and grab that and just kind of pull that out. See if we can get our finger underneath there and pop that out. You can see that that clip has extended out. Now we're going to press in on this little retaining button here. And that'll allow us to go ahead and pull that off. There is that little red lock clip. Our air intake tube is attached to the throttle body using a clamp. We're going to use our flathead screwdriver to loosen this. To the right of this clamp, you're going to locate this vacuum hose right here. Just pull that up and off. And over here to the left side of the air intake tube, we also have another vacuum port right here. There's a little gray clip or spring clip here. You can push on this. You can see it's flexible. Push in on that. We're going to grab this hose and pull this off. Separate it like that. On the corner of the air box right here, we have a little retaining tab for this harness. We're going to use our trim tool. Simply get underneath that and carefully pry up on that and pop that off. And then on the air box lid, we have the metal spring clips supporting or holding the cover to the base. Simply just pry that off. There's a couple of them. Now we can go ahead and grab this whole unit here. We're going to pull it off of the throttle body. Lift up on this unit. Pull it up and off and set it aside. The lower air box area here is held in place by two eight millimeter bolts. Go ahead and loosen and remove these. With those removed, then I'll go ahead and lift up on this. Give it a little wobble. And what we're doing is we're separating the little rubber grommet and the post. I'm gonna work this up and out. Above the cooling fan assembly, you're going to locate this big wiring harness that runs across the top. It runs down the driver's side of that cooling fan. You're going to use your trim tool. You want to go ahead and lift up on the little retaining buttons there and pop these off. Now these are a series of these running across the entire top and then down the other side. Across the top of the fan assembly. Just continue this process until the wire harness is completely free and clear of the cooling fan assembly. We have our upper radiator hose running across the front, supported by this little bracket. Just gonna lift up in that hose. Now I'm gonna use a pocket screwdriver on the passenger side of this upper radiator hose bracket. And about halfway down, there's a hole in the side of it. So what you're gonna do is put your screwdriver in there and you can actually release this here. You're gonna pull up on that clamp and put your screwdriver in there. You could probably use a pick as well and push it back. You're going to push this clip towards the fan and you're going to pop this out and you're releasing this little tab right here. So when you put the hole to put your screwdriver in, you're going to push this and adjust that and pop it out. On the passenger side of this cooling fan, you're going to locate the upper radiator hose clamp. We're going to use some pliers. You want to go ahead and compress 
the clamp and slide that back. You're gonna work that clamp back with that hose if you can. Then go ahead and grab that hose. And just kind of flip that back up and out of the way. With the hose out of the way, you can see a couple of the other retaining tabs here that were just kind of covered from the, the hose there. On the driver's side of the fan, we're going to locate an 8 millimeter bolt right here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen and remove that. This is one of the bolts here holding the fan in place. There's one on the passenger side. This is gonna be located just a few inches lower than the driver's side. And this bolt is located just below the upper radiator hose port. And we switch over to a hand ratchet, quarter inch just for clearance purposes. Okay, go ahead and remove that bolt. Disconnect the fan on the driver's side of the cooling fan assembly. And then reach up just underneath here, push in, and pull that harness off. We're gonna do the same for the passenger side fan. The cooling and fan assembly has a couple retainer tabs just resting on top of the radiator. It's one on the passenger side, one over on the driver side. When we lift this up, we're going to pull it up and then tilt it inward towards the motor and then lift it up. Now as you're lifting this up, you just want to maneuver this around the wiring harnesses mounting brackets, all that fun stuff. Across the top of the bumper area, you're gonna locate this little panel. There's two plastic trim buttons here. Gonna use our trim tool. I'm gonna pop these up and remove these. There's one right beside it on the passenger side. Now that you have those two out, there's a series of 10 millimeter bolts running across the top. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove these. Grab that cover, pull it up and set it aside. Loosen these four 730 seconds screws. Now the fender trim here, you're gonna gently pull out on this here. And up underneath, you're gonna locate another screw up in here. This supports the bumper to the splash guard. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove that. This is a seven millimeter. Across the bottom of our fender line to our bumper, there are gonna be three eight millimeter bolts. Go ahead and loosen and remove those. Go ahead and pull down the fender liner. Up inside, we're gonna locate our sensor right here on the side of the bumper. Now there are gonna be two retaining clips right here. You wanna spread those and pull the sensor out of the bumper. Pop that out. On the front side, if your vehicle is equipped with fog lights, you're gonna go ahead and locate it right here on the driver's side. And go ahead and I'm going to twist this out remove our bulb unit. Then we have the little retainer down on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out. You can use your trim tool. Sometimes you just grab that by hand and just kind of gently wiggle that out. I'm 
Now this point here, you wanna get and repeat this entire process for all the bolts, screws, bulbs, and the sensor on the passenger side. Across the bottom side of the radiator, there's gonna be three eight millimeter screws. Loosen and remove those. Pull up the fender trim gently. You're gonna locate an eight millimeter bolt on the inside. We're gonna use our quarter inch ratchet. Loosen and remove this here. Once you get this out, repeat for the passenger side. We're gonna reach down behind the fender trim here and grab the edge of the bumper and we're gonna gently pull it out and away from the body. You want to support that. It may be easier to have someone assist you with this here, but while I'm supporting this here, I'm going to reach over to the passenger side, grab that edge. Now we have a blanket on the ground. That way there, when we remove the bumper, we can go ahead and set those down. And roll us down. That way there, we don't scratch the painted finish. Now on the front side here, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt that holds a bracket. This bracket goes through this, supporting the top of the radiator. Now this is on the passenger side. If you go on over to the driver's side, we have one over here as well. I'm gonna loosen and remove this one and then remove the brackets from the inside. Go ahead and loosen up that clamp on our lower radiator hose. Kind of tuck that hose back a little bit. So right above the water neck here that bracket. I'm going to wiggle that up and off. There it is. I'm going to do the same for the one on the driver's side. On the front side, we're going to use our trim tool. I'm going to go ahead and Separate this little cover here. Pop this off this little button. Now with this little shield down, the top of this little plastic air deflector is actually just clipped onto the top of the AC condenser. So we're gonna push this in just a little bit and pull this out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same task on the passenger side, move this cover over. I'm gonna use our 10 millimeter socket and our quarter inch ratchet. Loosen this bolt. On the passenger side, there's actually an eight millimeter. Use our ratchet and our socket. Loosen that one. Ahead and pop that bolt out. Flex our radiator forward. And along the top here, there's gonna be a styrofoam insulator pad. Gonna work that up and off. Go ahead and grab that radiator. I'm gonna lift it up. Now I'm pulling the radiator inboard out of the rubber mounting brackets at the bottom. There's two brackets with two rubber grommets at the base. So if you pull that up, grab the two tubes for the AC condenser slash oil cooler and lift that up. And you're gonna dislodge it from two tabs on the radiator itself. I'm gonna do the same over here to this side. I'm 
I want to separate the AC condenser. So now that we have the condenser separated from the AC unit, I just want to do a quick inspection underneath here. On the driver's side here of the AC condenser unit, we have the cooler lines here. I'm going to go ahead and use our pliers. I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these hose clamps here. those lines there. I'm just going to grab them with the pliers and twist those lines to break them free. And then twist that off. Now we do have a catch can underneath or a bucket in case we have any other fluids come out of this here. And get this upper line off. We'll do the same for the bottom. Using a 13 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove the anchoring nut here on the upper AC condenser line. Now when removing these lines here, even though that the AC system was professionally evacuated, there might be a, be a slight amount of pressure just in the, in the system itself. So when you popped it off, you might hear a quick little hissing discharge. On the front side of the passenger side of the AC condenser, we have the lower, lower line here. We're gonna do the same thing, loosen and remove this nut. Now both the upper line and the lower line are sealed with a rubber O-ring. When to remove this here, you want to go ahead and inspect the rubber O-ring. Go ahead and wiggle this off. Now here is our rubber O-ring. You want to go ahead and inspect this all around. It looks like ours is in really good condition, so we're going to reuse that O-ring. If the O-ring looks worn, torn, or anything like that, you want to go ahead and replace this O-ring now, as well as the upper one, before you install the new condenser. And you just want to manipulate the AC condenser up around the hoses and electrical lines. bracket right here we have the AC adapter unit or the eight for the AC hose and we're just going to go ahead and loosen and remove this cap you want to go ahead and install the stud We're going to use our five millimeter socket to go ahead and snug this down. With that snug, we're going to grab the condenser. We're going to flip this up. And we have one on the other side we have to get to. So we're going to repeat that process. Can 
remove our cover off of our old condenser unit. Go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. Go ahead and take your AC condenser. We're gonna lower down the passenger side here. And on the upper passenger side AC line, you wanna inspect the rubber O-ring on here. We did that previously on disassembly. Now we're gonna use some PAG oil for the air conditioning unit. I'm gonna put a little bit into the cap, just a tiny bit. Now I'm going to take a little bit on my glove and I'm going to rub some on the O-ring seal. Now whether you're replacing that O-ring seal or reusing the old one, you definitely want to use that PAG oil on there. Line this up and press that in. Once you have that in place, we want to go ahead and install the nut. You want to make sure that the flange itself, where it bolts up to the AC condenser unit itself, is flush. If it's not flush, you want to reseat this. Now you want to make sure that this is snug. You just don't want to over tighten it. Make sure when you snug that down or it bottoms out, just give it a little bit more. And remove our protective rubber cap there. And slide that hose on. Now that we have our lower hose on there, install our clamp. Let's get and lower our radiator down inside. Now that we have the radiator down in the general position, there's a little air deflector down below that is attached to the radiator that has to go underneath the AC condenser as well. While we're feeding that underneath the AC condenser, we also have to raise up the AC condenser and insert that into the lock tabs on the forward portion of the radiator. raise up our AC condenser from the front side. You can reach underneath, grab the little insulator pad. While we're installing the radiator, we need to get this tab for the AC condenser into the lock tab on the radiator. While we're doing this, we're also pulling the air deflector or the little styrofoam mat underneath the AC condenser. Once we do this here, we also have to do it on the driver's side as well. Now on the bottom here, we have the rubber grommet. This hole in the middle is where the plastic pin for the radiator, it needs to fit into that. This is on the driver's side. We have one on the passenger side as well. Now that we have our AC condenser into the tabs on both sides of the radiator, let's go ahead and line things up and start installing some hardware. Attaching the AC condenser to the radiator, the longer 10 millimeter bolt goes on the driver's side and the shorter 8 millimeter bolt goes on the passenger side. Just 
snug that down gently. I'm gonna snug that down. And this will continue to tighten as long as you keep on cranking on it. There's a rubber bushing here. We tighten that just to the point where it starts to swell a little bit around the washer head itself, and we call it good. We're gonna install our lower AC line now. The reason why we didn't do it prior to this is that we needed the adjustability of the AC condenser to have mobility up and down. Insert the air deflectors, snapping these into place. Gonna go ahead and repeat this for the other side. Gonna line up the rest of our air deflectors here. Push it on. Push that through. It's gonna repeat this for the other side. Now upon installation of our radiator, we did swap over the rubber damper right here. Now we have our mounting bracket here. Now this rubber damper goes inside of this bracket. There's gonna be a little tab where this lines up into and pops into place like so. Now the textured side of that bushing should go down. I'm gonna lean our radiator back a little bit, insert that onto the top post. Now this tab is gonna come through the front side of the radiator support, but before we lock anything down, we wanna go ahead and repeat this process for the passenger side. And once those tabs come through, I'm gonna get our bolts installed here. Do the same for the other side. Snug down both tabs. Install our lower radiator hose. Make sure that clamp is in place. Give it a little wiggle. Make sure it's on there all right. On the top of the old radiator, I'm gonna remove our retainer for our upper insulator pad. This raised portion of this foam insulator pad fits on top of the radiator. So we're gonna flip this over and there's a hole here for that little lock tab. This lock tab that goes through here will actually secure onto one of the uh, portions of the upper radiator. So we're gonna feed this up and in. Go ahead and tuck that up into position. Now on the upper portion of our radiator, there's two thin fins facing upward. You line up that little tab on that and just press that down. That'll keep that foam insulator in place. I'm gonna bring our bumper back into place. I'm gonna try and line up the top of the grill Get that grill up into place. I'm gonna come around to the passenger side here. We wanna get the bumper to fit underneath the headlight into this bracket here, as well as the bracket on the side of the fender. Go ahead and line this up. Go ahead and lock this in on the driver's side as well. Let's put on the upper grill panel here. Let's 
go ahead and snug these down. Now once those bottom out, stop. You don't want to over tighten, you're just securing plastic to the trim. Install the two plastic push pin retainers. Go ahead and get that upper bolt in for the edge of the fender. Snug that down gently to our fender liner bolt here. Line up our molding. Let's go ahead and install our screws. Gently want to snug these down. Get our lower screws installed. Install your fog light into the back of the fog light assembly. The fog light itself has three tabs on it. There's one larger one, two smaller ones. Match it up with the notches on the back side. Lock it in. Install your little retainer harness here. Take your sensor, line it up with the sensor mount and push it in. You can hear and feel it snap into both sides of the retainer. Go ahead and install your three bolts on the bottom side here. and snug those down. Install the bolts across the bottom of the radiator area. Once you have these in, just snug them down. Now on our radiator, on the passenger side, there is a little hook tab down at the lower corner. On the driver's side, it's about halfway up the radiator. These tabs are what is going to retain the position of our cooling fans. So when we drop in our cooling fan assembly, there's a, uh, a little tab on there that is gonna fit inside these little retainers on both sides, and then we'll install the two bolts on the top. It's going to take a little bit of effort here to get this down in position. I'm just going to have to work this around the wiring harness and the hose. Just have some patience when doing this and be cautious. Okay, our fan is in position. On the passenger side, we're gonna install our 
fan bolt. Now you're going to want to go ahead and lift up on that fan just a little bit so that the hole lines up. Going to get that bolt started. We're going to get the bolt started on the driver's side and then we're going to snug them both down. Go ahead and snug that down gently. Let's go ahead and repeat the same for the passenger side. Once that bottom's out, just give it a little bit more. So you're going to go ahead and pop retainers into corresponding clips here. Now this here goes to the lower portion of the fan assembly. So we're going to feed this down. Line that up. You can feel that connector pop into place. So now we have our retainers that run down along the edge here. Install our passenger side fan connector. Install your retaining buttons in. Now we definitely want to pay attention to anything that might come in contact with the fan itself. Check all of your other wiring harnesses. Make sure everything is clear. Good line up your upper radiator hose. Now, performing a job like this here, you want to make sure that your clamps are in good condition. If they're rusted and they look really thin and fragile, definitely replace them. You don't want to end up stuck on the side of the road with a coolant hose that had blown off and leave you stranded. Ours are a little bit rusty, but they're in good shape overall. Get that hose pushed in all the way. Make sure that clamp is seated. Install your upper radiator hose support. This is little hang on here that's going to press down and fit inside so simply lift up the hose snap that down and in and then drop that hose into place install our lower air box put the two nubs into the rubber grommets down below push it down line up the mounting tabs underneath the grill cover here and install your two bolts. I'm just going to get both of these bolts started here. Let's go ahead and zip those down. Just snug them down. Once those are snug, we're simply going to go ahead and drop our air filter into the air box base. Let's go ahead and install our lid now. Now we're going to go ahead and install our air box lid on the upper edge right here. There's going to be three tabs and these three tabs fit into the air box base. Once those tabs are in, we can go ahead and lower the rest of this down in a position. Line up the air intake tube with the throttle body. Make sure it's seated all the way down as far as it'll go. We'll tighten down the clamp here using our flathead screwdriver. And once you have that tight, just to the right of this clamp, we have our vacuum hose here. I want to go ahead and insert that onto the back. Over to the left of our intake tube, we have this other hose right here. 
You simply want to line that up, push it on. You're going to feel it snap into place. Install your snap clips here on the airbox lid. There's two of them. Once you have these on, I want to go ahead and install our mass airflow sensor connector. Don't forget, once you press this on, you have to press this red lock tab in to position to lock it in. Press that tab in. And then we have the little retainer. This little plastic retainer here will press into the corner of the airbox lid. Now, in order to go ahead and fill up and top off your cooling system, you want to go ahead and open up the expansion tank here. Now, you're going to use the appropriate coolant for this unit here. You're going to fill it up roughly about an inch or two above the full cold mark. Close this up. Start up the vehicle. You want to go ahead and let that run for about a half hour. Wait for that thermostat to open up inside the engine, and that is going to go ahead and take the coolant from the expansion tank here and fill up where the air pocket used to be. At that point there, open this back up and top off the fluid as necessary. It might take you a couple times of doing that to go ahead and get this to the proper level. Now that we have that job completed, you wanna go ahead and bring the vehicle down and get your AC system professionally recharged. At that point there, you should be all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.